You're live. I was born to be alive. Uh, today's theme. Well, happy birthday, Michelle Pfeiffer. Yep. Today's theme is white gold. Uh, <laughs> the theme was Michelle Pfeiffer. The um, options for the poll were the Witches of Eastwick, Dangerous Minds, Up Close and Personal, What Lies Beneath, and Batman Returns. Mm -hmm. It was a very close race between Batman Returns, What Lies Beneath, and The Witches of Eastwick. I was kind of hoping What Lies Beneath won. Literally I, no one voted for Up Close and Personal. I did. <laughs> I did. Um, because I'm reading the book Monster by John Gregory Dunn, which... Which is very been, interesting. And I've never seen Up Close and Personal. Uh, with the, the only film I haven't seen on that list. But the movie is not as interesting as the subject. Well, I don't know. I haven't seen it. Uh, well, I doubt, you know, it was very uh, pared down. But Batman Returns won the 1992 film directed by Tim Burton. Which is a sequel that he did not want to be a sequel. Oh, but he did it anyway. Well, he did, but he didn't. That's why Kim Basinger is not in it. And the Gotham looks different. Oh, yet. that's what you mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he didn't want it uh, to be a direct sequel. It's like, well, okay. Um, I wanted to see Batman Returns. I've been saying I've wanted to watch it for a long time. Mm -hmm. So, and I have I haven't watched it in decades. <laughs> the story: While Batman deals with a deformed man calling himself the Penguin, wreaking havoc across Gotham with the help of a cruel businessman, a female employee of the latter becomes the Catwoman with her own vendetta. I thought this movie was good. Um, it should have been called the villain, the villains of Gotham City, though, because Batman feels very. Like, like he's a supporting character. Yeah. Um, it's... The, the villains are what make the movie. I don't care for Batman in general. I definitely don't like Michael Keaton as Batman. Uh -huh. And in this movie, he feels like a supporting character. It, he kind of kills the energy of the film anytime we have to focus on him. It's just like, okay, yeah, yeah, it's a Batman movie. Yeah, but I guess the basic story is Christopher Walken plays this businessman in Gotham who runs the power company. Max Shrek. And he's a villain, and he's trying to steal power from Gotham. So there's him. Then there's Michelle Pfeiffer, who plays Christopher Walken's assistant, and she finds out about his nefarious plans and stupidly tells him, her character seems a little dumb to me. <laughs> she is. She's frustratingly passive and she's a dingbat. Yeah. But uh, when Christopher Walken finds out that she knows what he's doing, he's like, well, you're not going to destroy my legacy. So he throws her out of a window. And I was reading and even someone commented that people think that maybe her character doesn't die. But either way, she gets thrown out of a window. And then when she's revived, she turns into Catwoman. And then it's very simple. There is no, it's not like the movie where they explain there's some like Egyptian God. Blah, with blah, with blah. Halle Berry, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, and then there is Danny DeVito. We see that when he was a baby, his dad, Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, pa Paul, I was like, God, that's Paul Rubens. Yeah. Throws him like into the sewer because the baby is born with some abnormalities. Mm -hmm. and But the baby doesn't die. It is raised by penguins in the sewer, which is so dumb that it, I thought it was cute. A very clean sewer. Yeah, that water is crystal clear. I, I'd swim in that water. Uh, A and, grotto. And then we see 33 years later, that baby has grown into uh, Oswald Cobblepot, played by Danny DeVito. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's mad because he spent all of his life in the sewer and he wants to be up where the people are. Like Ariel. So he has a plan to abduct Christopher Walken, which he does, to say, you're going to help me become like a proper citizen of Gotham. And he does so by like, they have this like elaborate scheme where there's like a press conference and the mayor's baby gets kidnapped and the penguin saves the baby. Why? So now the public thinks the penguin is a hero. Why is the baby at the press conference? What if it had been left at home? This story is so complicated. So then Christopher Walken realizes that Batman's not going to let the mayor allow Christopher Walken to execute his plan. So he, Christopher Walken decides to help the penguin become the mayor. In a, a, a kind of vague coup. And Batman is just in the background, like, falling in love with Catwoman. Well, Selina Kyle, he doesn't know she's Catwoman, which we need to talk about. But 
everything culminates with, I forgot what it culminates with. Oh, because the Penguin and Catwoman have a common enemy, Batman, because they know that he's going to foil their plans, they decide to kill him. But it's not enough to kill him. They need to destroy his reputation so that when he dies, he's not a martyr. Like people will think he was a bad guy. And they're going to do so by taking control of the Batmobile and another elaborate setup where like some woman dies and they think Batman's responsible. And that's sort of the end of the film. But then, of course, Batman gets the upper hand. The Penguin dies in a very anticlimactic way because he gets injured and then he comes back and then we see him like just kind of die. Mm -hmm. And then Catwoman and Christopher Walken basically kill each other. But then it's not clear if Catwoman dies because the final shot is us seeing her shadow. I think it's implied she might have, have another life left. But So Batman really didn't do shit. And then <laughs> it's just all all's well that ends well. Gotham's going to stay raggedy because <laughs> clearly they make a hundred movies about how Batman can't control the city. Mm -hmm. But that's it. Um, what would you give this movie? Three out of five. I would give it like three and a half out of five. I really liked how it looked. Oh, the production design. You know, I, as a kid, I wouldn't have known all the Weimar Republic uh, references, but immediately I'm like, Max Schreck, that's the actor that played Nosferatu. There's a lot of very weird uh, things going on in the background and also a lot of sexual innuendo. We can talk about it, but I'm just going to go through my notes. When the Penguin's parents throw him in the sewer... I felt like they could have done a better job of disposing of that baby. It, it <laughs> I mean, if they really wanted to get rid of it. It struck me as it's kind of the inverse of the Moses story where his mother, Jochebed, has to toss him in the River Nile to escape Pharaoh and, who ends, and Pharaoh's daughter ends up finding him anyway. It's very much kind of that sense of mythology. Okay. I'm not familiar with that story. But... Um... When we see the baby, the like it's in a cage, and mm -hmm. it like eats the cat. <laughs> um, when we see that the penguin is only thirty three years old, I fell out. Although I guess like he lives in the sewer, apparently. Eats yeah, but he's not exposed to sun, so mm -hmm. his skin should be popping, and he that water's clean. He's eating fish. Yeah, there's. Uh, I mean, maybe there's a lot of mercury in that fish. He, I feel like he should look as smooth as Nicole Kidman. I don't know why he looks like an like a. I thought he looks like, like a dirty hard boiled egg. <laughs> he was giving me Patty Lupone mixed with Pete Davidson. In the face, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so Christopher Walken's son Chip. That was an interesting looking man. I thought he looked like if you mix Bruce Campbell and Carrie Elwes. Yes, he's giving chin. He kind mm -hmm. of like a monster. He did. He looked deformed <laughs> in a way that I couldn't. Quite, well, he's always wearing these big kind of yuppie coats. So I couldn't quite get a grasp of his dimension. He was interesting. Um, Christopher Walken, though, is very striking. Yes. And I, I liked his hair. I like how they did his makeup and his eyebrows. Those he's are, so, he's so good in everything. He, he is. Uh, he's damn near 50 in this. And I think he looks better than Michael Keaton. I just, I don't mind Michael Keaton. I, I don't either. Like, I've seen him in other movies and he's fine. And he's like a, I mean, he's a, like a regular looking dude. Mm -hmm. But it's like for Batman, I feel like the only person who makes sense for Batman to me is Christian Bale or Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer was very handsome when he did Batman. Mm -hmm. But like George Clooney to me seems like kind of like, like a fun guy, like, I don't know. George Clooney to me doesn't seem like Batman. Neither does Michael Keaton or uh, Ben Affleck or Pattinson. Well, I didn't see Pattinson's Batman. It wasn't bad. But yeah. Yeah. Michael Keaton, I just. And Colin Farrell is now going to be the Penguin in the new. Well, he already was, but he's getting his own film, I believe. Oh, well, I like Colin Farrell. I do too. Uh, so the Penguin, he. Like, I don't know how Danny DeVino, DeVito didn't get nominated for an Academy Award. Because I think he is perfect. He is perfect. When you talk of people toss around the word iconic, Danny DeVito and Michelle Pfeiffer, this shit's iconic in, in these roles. And not, not a lot feels that way these days. No. I, and especially with the script. The script really inherently isn't that great. No. It's really fussy. We don't really see the fallout in the press or amongst the public of Gotham of their, their plan to ruin... 
Batman's reputation. Gotham, you know, they, they seem real stupid and simple, the, the populace there. But I don't understand how Gotham just stays raggedy. Like, so there's this superhero living there who is effective in destroying every villain in every movie, every story. And they keep popping up. Well, he, it's like, why don't these people move, go to like Chicago then? I don't understand why they keep trying to. He attracts negativity because of his presence and it it necessitates. But but to me, it's like Superman makes more sense because in all the stories I can recall, the villains for Superman, like they're coming to Metropolis specifically for Superman. But the villains in Batman, it's like they want to run amok in Gotham City. So it's just like, it's like Batman's a punk. Like no one's worried about Batman. (laughs) They all think they can do something with him. So I already don't like the superheroes who don't have any like powers. Cause to me, he's not a superhero. He's just a man with a suit. And money. Lots of money. Oodles of money. I already don't care for that character of Batman. And then, yeah, in this movie, he just seemed like a side character. His romance with Selena Kyle to me seems so stupid. Like you can't tell that's Catwoman. If she can't tell that's my Batman. And, <laughs> yeah, doesn't she have an, an uh, enhanced sense of smell? Because they're her? intimate. So then it's like, yeah, she couldn't smell that that was him. Isn't she a cat? <laughs> I don't know. I just think it's silly. But I know it's not supposed to seem realistic. Uh, DeVito, yeah, I also wouldn't have known as a kid, is styled very much after Lon Chaney in London After Midnight. Oh. Which I think uh, Nick Cage as Dracula in the new Renfield film also I think was... Uh, a nod to that but uh the the origins of who played eventually played catwoman is interesting behind the scenes because annette benning was cast at a third of the price before she became pregnant with warren Beatty. i but, could see annette benning because she's gorgeous mm-hmm. in 1991 i mean she still is a beautiful lady mm-hmm. but um, but all the other you know remember sean young's campaign to get the role and uh, a, a whole lot of other people, including. Uh, I actually think Sean Young would have been a good choice because she had the look and then she seems unstable like Catwoman. Yes, I, I agree. Uh, but there, there are uh, apparently part of the trivia or the lore is that Meryl Streep was considered too old, but they considered Sigourney Weaver, but they're the same age. And then Susan Sarandon, who's even older than both of them was considered. No, I don't think any of them would have made sense. I, I think Madonna, Cher and, Demi Lovato, or Demi Lovato, Demi Moore, <laughs> Demi Lovato was going to be Catwoman in 1992. Um, I could see Madonna doing it. Mm, I, pref- you know, Sigourney can do anything in my mind, but in 91 though, mm-hmm. yeah, that's right after Alien Three. Alien She's Three had come out. Tall yet. though, like she doesn't look like a like a cat to me. Like I think it needs to be more petite. Sure, she could be Giraffe Woman. Oh boy. <laughs> But she almost played Cruella. Oh, see, she could do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like the fashion and the clothes would hang on her. Yeah, that that makes sense. Um, Cher, no, Um, I don't see that. And Demi Moore, yeah, I mean, she could be Catwoman. Anyway, um, the scene where the penguin meets his like mayoral election staff was so good. But getting to the innuendo with Jan Hooks. Yeah. In a minor role. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. I thought the innuendo felt inappropriate for some reason. And I'm not like a prude, but I just didn't feel like the vibe of the movie matched because there are several many moments where there's like pretty obvious sexual innuendo. Oh, yeah. And it just like this movie doesn't feel. Well, it's cartoonish. Yeah. So it feels it's kind of distressing to think of, you know, Penguin wanting to you know, do do the nasty with uh, Catwoman. Yeah, like Christopher Walken's character talks about poontang. He says there's, un- when he becomes mayor, there's unlimited poontang. It's like, oh, that's gross. And like Catwoman reaching for Batman's crotch. And- mm-hmm. I remember my parents, because I probably saw this in 93 when it was on VHS for the first time. They, I remember them discussing whether it was appropriate for me to see it. I, I would have... Like me today in 1992, seeing this movie, I would have said like, absolutely not. Like, this is not for kids. Like, but, like PG-13, it should be like rated R, baby. But but as like a third grader, that it did fly over my head. I think the only thing I thought was risque was the crotch grab as a kid. But sure. all this yeah. other stuff, I, I, I don't recall uh, 
I don't, I don't remember it being as sexual as it is. I think that the idea that the penguin was able to rewire the Batmobile seems real flimsy. Like the fact that they were able to like unlock the Batmobile because it has like a when Batman gets out of it, he does his little clicker and it becomes like a fortress, right? And then someone comes and just unlocks it. And then they rewire it, like fully rewire it so that the penguin can control it from his little like amusement park ride car. And then at a point, Batman punches a hole through the floor of the Batmobile. Uh-huh. That made that took me out. He punched a hole through the floor of the Batmobile. Shouldn't that thing be reinforced to like withstand like a bomb? Mm -hmm. And he just punched a hole through it. Yeah. And this is not a superhero man. This is just Michael Keaton punching a hole through. I didn't like that. I just like that entire thing and them trying to like destroy his reputation seemed like it didn't make any sense. Um, Then there's another moment that doesn't make sense when Bruce Wayne and Alfred are like in the house somewhere. And then Bruce Wayne goes to that fish tank to open that like casket thing to go downstairs. Mm -hmm. And it has all the like, uh, like pokey things in it, spikes. And and Bruce says, you want to come with me? And Alfred says, no, I'll take the stairs. And they get downstairs at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like they both literally walk into the room at the same time. So why did you reach your hand in the aquarium and get into a spiked casket when this old ass man made it downstairs at the same time. I know, and you were very cold about Michael Guff's Alfred. I didn't care for Alfred. You just saw him as a much younger man in uh, Berserk as Joan Crawford's nemesis. You made a funny comment. So when the penguin, when his constituents kind of turn on him and they're throwing like tomatoes at him, he starts shooting at them. And then it's like, the way these dumbass people in Gotham seem, I feel you were like, they would still vote for him. Probably. Even the fact that they do this, um, a face in the crowd thing to bring him down where Bruce Wayne plays the snippet of him saying he's played this city like a harp from hell. And they immediately, it's like that, that wakes people up. I don't know if they're that smart. Again, things that just seem so ridiculous with Batman at the end, when he rips off his mask, to show it comes off real easy. He ripped it off like when I peel my Cadbury egg. Mm-hmm. Like it was like nothing. Like these party city costumes you're wearing. Cause even Selena Kyle like stabs him or Catwoman stabs him through his. Isn't this shit supposed to be like reinforced? And how is he super then? Mm-hmm. Well, even Catwoman's costume when she gets dumped in the truck with the kitty litter and she's it, it's ripped it's like god it looks kind of flimsy sometimes but well even when she made her costume i'm like oh so she had all this this meek ass lady had like all this leather and because mm-hmm. at least in the movie they show that catwoman or that Halle berry had like a leather um like jumpsuit so that she could fashion it into her outfit but in this one it's like okay i also wish they would have made selena kyle a little more frumpy sure because the minute we see michelle pfeiffer she just has her hair in a messy updo with glasses but her um work outfit is like a very well tailored like skirt set so you can tell that she's popping and she's beautiful Mm -hmm. so yeah i kind of wish they would have done a little bit more to make her seem kind of frumpy yeah it is michelle pfeiffer do you have any other notes? No, not really. I mean, I like how it looks. Uh, the, I like all the nods to Russian architecture, the kind of that Lenin-Stalin era with all the the kind of uh, nods to kind of forced labor that they kind of connote. Oh, lastly, um, when the penguin like comes back to literally just die, the the like his penguins like drag him into the water. But it looks like the penguins aren't touching him. They're just kind of shimmying him along, I think. Yeah, but I mean, there's no contact. So I don't know how they dragged his ass into the water, but it was cute. And the combination of, because you can tell that some of those penguins are not penguins. No, but they, they did fly real penguins in and apparently had, they had their own trailer. And 
uh, apparently the sign of a contented penguin is that they mate and have children. I think there were some baby penguins born during the filming. <laughs> so they, they were treated well. So, so PETA won't get their ass. That's I what guess. they're saying. Um, okay. I'm going to go through the comments. This is someone's favorite Michelle Pfeiffer performance. What's your favorite Michelle Pfeiffer performance? Oh, like I, I said many times, I really like her in a 2017 film called Where's Kyra. I think Love Field is great which she was nominated for an Oscar in. Uh, I, I do like What Lies Beneath quite a, a bit, but I'd, it's been years since I've watched that. Uh, she's got a lot of good performances. I do think a fun moment with Catwoman is when she's in that uh, Shrek's department store tearing stuff up. And those two cops are like, please, lady, spare us. We only get the minimum wage. Our take home is 300. And she's like, you're overpaid. Yeah. <laughs> that was good. But she lets him go. I do think it was interesting because the first, I feel like the first notable person of color is this indigenous person that's trying to rob a woman in the alley that Michelle Pfeiffer saves. And then one of Danny DeVito's uh, cronies it, underneath the zoo is decked out with like Native American wear, but doesn't seem to be. I thought that was an interesting choice. Have you seen White Oleander? Mm -hmm. And I read the book. Uh, that's a pretty good performance. God. Alison Lohman and Renee Zellweger. Uh, the book and the film are good. Michelle Pfeiffer is kind of this deadly, toxic mom. Oh, hello, New York. Someone's watching the movie in another tab. <laughs> um, I do need to watch What Lies Beneath. No, well, we have it. And I should rewatch Witches of Eastwick. They're remaking that. I, I've never read the book by Updike, which I'd like to. It didn't make me want to watch the first Batman. Um, I did want to watch Batman Forever, but Wait. then you said it wasn't very good. I don't remember. I, again, I could rewatch it. It's been years and years and years, but I don't remember really liking any of them. <laughs> Besides the first two, I think because of my childhood, but. In college, my boyfriend talked about this movie so much and his mom mailed it to him and we had to rent a DVD player. And in 10 minutes, he was asleep. Never watched it. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. Okay. We both look great. Thank you. Thank you. Nick, someone likes your t-shirt. Oh, can't go wrong with Liz. Someone recently just watched Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Oh, little no-neck monsters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, they Richard Brooks had to butcher that film because they the queer shit had to get left out. Oh yeah, why aren't you wearing your Batman shirt? Do I have a Batman shirt? Yes. Oh, I do. <laughs> I do. I forgot about that shirt. That's Norwood Young shirt. Yeah, that, that shirt belonged to Norwood Young. And it's tight on me. So I don't know when he was wearing that. Well, he's like, well, he is like over six feet tall. Mm -hmm. He's he's taller than me. Yeah. So that was probably like, he was showing belly with that shirt. <laughs> uh, this movie was someone's introduction to Christopher Walken. Well, I wonder when I realized who Christopher Walken was. Is he in like a Steve? Oh, Dead Zone. Oh, yeah. Cronenberg. That's probably when I knew who Christopher Walken was. I could go for a rewatch of that, too. Pretty damn good. Uh, did you ever see The Deer Hunter, what he won his Oscar for? I don't think so. Mm, pretty good. So, I wanted to be Batman when I was a kid. <laughs> the opening... Oh yeah, when they see the, the the baby and they're running out of the room, mm -hmm. that that is a very strong opening. Oh yeah, I mean it's it's very Tim Burton. I mean the Danny Elfman score. I feel like they could have just had a they should have had a penguin movie with Danny DeVito. Well, now they're doing that now, I guess. Oh wow. Oh, I did watch a YouTube video of like an outtake of Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman using the whip mm -hmm. and like there was a take where she knocked off all the mannequin heads, like in one take. But then I was reading that she recently, well, not recently, like in 2004 or 2000, was like moving out of a house and found the whip and was like playing with it. And she commented that she had fallen out of practice, <laughs> like she couldn't use it. Um, <laughs> someone throwing an infant. Someone throwing an infant into the sewer. Iconic. Very Andy Warhol's bad, yeah. Yeah, she throws out her, uh, she pulls out that sewing machine and gets to work. <laughs> and that light fixture in her room that ends up saying hell here, I think. 
instead of hello there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Um, where Bruce investigates Walken. Oh, and the, with the microfiche? No, yeah. is that it? Oh, no, when he goes to Christopher Walken's office and he throws that report at him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> like, okay. Christopher Walken was talking to Bruce Wayne like he was small fish, but isn't like Bruce Wayne the richest man in Gotham? I think they're rivals. I think that that dynamic wasn't well done. Like they should have, I don't know. They, I don't like the story of this movie. I just really like the villains, but I think it's too busy. And really it's like, they make Batman seem like he's really like nothing to worry about. Although Chris, at that masquerade ball when Christopher Walken's like, what are you, trust fund goody goody? <laughs> Batman is the world's greatest detective, but never realizes his girlfriends are the villains. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even think of the theme song from this movie. Because the first one is from Prince, right? Bat Dance? Mm -hmm. With Vicky Vale. Yeah, I remember that one. And then the, the Kiss from a Rose is the third Seal. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what was the one for this one? Mm. I don't even remember there being a song. I'm reading these comments. Hold on. Oh, the tagline was the bat, the cat, and the penguin. <laughs> well, your favorite cat woman would be Eartha Kitt. Oh, yeah. You can't get better than Eartha. I mean, Michelle Pfeiffer's pretty damn close, though. What's your favorite Tim Burton movie? Uh, Edward Scissorhands. What about you? I don't think I know. Oh, you do. Beetlejuice, probably. Oh, Beetle. Oh, yeah. It would have to be Beetlejuice. I've seen that movie a hundred times. Mm -hmm. um, Danny DeVito, the hair. I mean, the well, the hair. I mean, he has like that little... Uh, from Rocky Horror Picture Show, the butler hair, mm -hmm. and then um, the makeup, the teeth, and then like how his like riffraff. So yeah, his riffraff hair, that nose. I mean, the full prosthetic. His teeth are like obviously like a like a little monster, but then he his saliva looks dark. Yeah, and got a black tongue. And a black tongue, and that body. That <laughs> and then what's funny about the body is you see people running around here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I it's mean, always the people with the penguin's body who want to wear like athleisure mm -hmm. to like go to panera fabletics <laughs> i was at uh this morning out and about sitting in my car watching people going to panera and it's like oh as one does we just wear anything when we leave the house um but no he and then the like the physical acting and the grunting Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so it kind of sounds like when the cat is chewing her tail mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah our gross. cat sucks its tail like a kid does a thumb when she's happy yeah apparently michelle pfeiffer put a real bird in her mouth oh did she because i guess they wanted it to look real she agreed the penguin had camel well they don't he did the penguin have camel toe i feel like he had a what do you call it when people's like their pants are stuck in their butt. Uh, is that a mer? No. Yeah. What is that called? Uh, uh, yeah, kids do it to each other. What's, What's a mer? What, what? A merkin is to no a Murphy or am I totally a dirty off? Sanchez? No, no. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, when people like pull your underwear up. Oh yeah. Uh, God. Does anyone know what you call it when someone like pulls your underwear up mm -hmm. into your butt? But yeah, his like the back of him, you could see. <laughs> Mm -hmm. The penguin had no ass, literally no ass. <laughs> um, he's supposed to be the inverse of Bruce Wayne, <laughs> like his shape. <laughs> what do you mean, Max Shrek? <laughs> there is no soap in the sewer, I suppose. Um, yeah, Michelle looks that <clears throat> costume. Apparently, I was, hated wearing it. <laughs> well, I was reading that had to be like vacuum, like should it be, you know. Mm -mm. Look up Christopher Walken best entrance on YouTube. Okay. Remember him in that fat is it a fat boy slim music video? He dances. Yeah, he's very cute. 
he dances and um i think about him on snl the skit where he's talking about champagne or champagne you need to see true romance with the uh, supporting role he's very good in that the thing about keaton was that tom hanks market corrected his career <laughs> i do prefer keaton to tom hanks but Oh, there is soap in the sewer. That's where the shower water goes. <laughs> well, he does say, because when the penguin kidnaps Christopher Walken, he does tell him, like, everything you throw away, like, I get it. Because he has the body of, like, his business partner down there. He's like, you flush it, I flaunt it. Yeah, you flush it, I flaunt it. Oh, Patty Lupone asking Ari Aster uh, if he's a theater queen. Oh God, <laughs> she is such a she's a she's out of hand, but she is really good in Bo is Afraid. She's a very talented woman, and I enjoy her immensely. But oh my God, the penguin was bloated like he needed a colonic. He needed a few. Things. What was he eating down there? I don't know. When he's <laughs> eating that munching on that fish, oh. <laughs> He's kind of cute, but like also a nightmare. I mean, I'd walk the other way. What is another big role for Michael Keaton? Well, Batman, Beetlejuice, and then Birdman. Well, Mr. Mom, that was Oh, Mr. This. Mom. But he was in that, God, I forget the name of it. I had to watch it in some psych class where he's part of a group of mentally unstable people. It's very odd and uncomfortable. God, I'll have to look that up and tell you. I've never seen it from start to finish, but we had to critique a scene. Oh, well, well. Rob Pattinson was a bad Bruce Wayne, but he was a good Batman. I can agree with that, yeah. Michael Keaton is amazing, sexy as hell. Um, or he's an amazing Batman. Uh, he's doing this thing with his lips. Yeah, he was pursing his lips. and Very Alec Baldwin. I also don't think the way the mask was fitting him was very flattering to like his... Also, when he takes the mask off, his eyes are not black. Yeah. But when he's wearing the mask, it looks like... Yeah, those... The, I don't know. I don't think he's horrible as Batman. No. I just didn't... I don't know. that Because what did he get? $11 million for this? Oh. To reprise his role. And uh, it made me... It did make me want to rewatch the first one because I'm assuming he's much more substantial in the 88... Is it 88 film? 90s Batmans or pre-psychological horror cinema Batmans? Are they all really dark? Yeah, they... Uh... Well, I haven't seen the newer ones either, so I just know Christian Bale. Yeah, you've started the Christopher Nolan, several I, of them. I really don't like Batman. I like Tom Hardy. I don't like... I'm, I'm going to say it every time I get a chance. I don't like superheroes who don't have superpowers. <laughs> sure. Tom, I just don't like that. Tom Hardy's fun as Bane. And I didn't hate Anne Hathaway as Catwoman, but... Yeah, why isn't Bruce Wayne tackling the systemic oppression? That's what I was saying earlier today. Like, why doesn't he fix, like, all that money, all those resources, and Gotham is still ragged? I know, and then Max <laughs> Shrek at the Christmas lighting is throwing these wrap boxes at people in the crowd. It's like, don't throw boxes at me. What are you? <laughs> Did we like Catwoman's origin story like in the Halle Berry movie? That... I mean... Oh, that poor Halle Berry. I don't know how else you're going to explain that craziness, but... No. Yeah, Julie Newmar is If not... the movie would have been better. What is your take on the, on all the canceled 80s movies like Revenge of the Nerds, Short Circuit, Soul Man? I mean, because they had, well, Soul Man. We have C. Thomas Howell playing Darkening His I Night. think they have relevance because that that is a barometer for like... What was culturally acceptable. Yeah, so I feel like it's important to for people to know that like... Because it's a good reference, right? Mm -hmm. Like if I was... I'm born in the 70s, so then growing up in the 80s, like, you know, having those kind of movies and like that was the climate I grew up in, which would explain why I have the feelings I may have today. Right. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's important to like 
consider that. But it, I, I think it seems weird to watch a movie from 1970s and be like, that's transphobic, that's problematic. Like, yeah, and we've yeah. evolved, like, good. But, but yeah, that's, that's, that's the point. It's like reading Mark Twain, it's like, well, you should keep the N-word in there because that was... That was what was acceptable. But yeah, short circuit, when you think of Fisher Stevens playing the uh, Indian man, it's like, oh, God. But Mickey Rooney in Breakfast at Tiffany's. I do like that movie, but that's it's hard to watch. It's uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, of course. But I mean, it's like that's that's what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, are you saying for Catwoman they originally wanted Betty Davis, but I think she was dead? <laughs> she was dead by then, yes. Uh, yeah, I think Sigourney is Catwoman. She's just too tall and statuesque, and like I just don't see her as like feline. Hmm. Also, okay. she, well, and then can you see her? Well, yeah, and then also like Catwoman in this movie is just doing flips and flips and flips, and I feel like for Sigourney. First of all, they're gonna have to like they'd have to they'd have to get someone as tall as her who can do those stunts. And mm -hmm. I feel like it would look funny. Sure. Like you would think it's a man doing it. They probably would have to no, because they probably would have to get a man who's thin and to be that tall. And I don't know. I she's good in a lot of other things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Indy Moore would be interesting. What current um actor would you choose for Catwoman today? You mean you don't like Zoe Kravitz? <laughs> um, it, it, Aubrey Plaza is a good suggestion. I don't know. I'd have to think about that. But Oh, India Moore would be interesting. Yeah, that's what I yeah. saw. That. I mean, really any young lady. I mean, any, you know, because obviously she needs to be. The, I think the thing is that she's attractive, right? So mm -hmm. Jessica Lange. Oh, yeah. I love Jessica Lange. The cat's licking me. Yes, Joseph is stunningly gorgeous. Are they reading these comments? Oh, <laughs> am I? <laughs> well, thank you. Not sure Batman could get wood in the rubber. Well, <laughs> I don't know what he would. He, I'm sure he'd pet you. Oh yes, when the penguin took. Uh, his little pin and put it on that woman's chest. Like he's so creepy. He's and what do you think his breath smelled like? Oh, he was just <laughs> eating raw fish. And then that, what does that woman say to him? Like, what are we about a young fan or like, well, how young are you? We should review suddenly last summer. I, I mean, I could watch that anytime, anywhere. Oh yeah. That flying umbrella would not have supported the penguin, <laughs> but it's funny to watch. And his death scene when he pulls out the wrong one, he's like, damn, I grabbed a cute one. <laughs> Because <laughs> the umbrellas are usually weaponized. The penguin funeral had you in stitches at the end. <laughs> um, yeah, I, there were so many interesting characters revolving around the penguin, like his little, like they almost look like like panto performers. Mm -hmm. And we really don't get any background as to who these people are and no, why they're. But Doug Jones is. The thin clown, the one that runs away at the end. Oh, I would have enjoyed more about the penguin. Oh yeah, Vichy Swaz when <laughs> and and Bruce Wayne doesn't know what it is, which I thought was funny. Yeah, his and his attitude's kind of funky. Like the way he talks to Alfred, like kind of bossy. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I just didn't like this Bruce Wayne. I don't think I've ever had Vichy. It made me want to make that as well as. Um, What's the Russian soup with the beets I've always wanted to make? Um, it's also cold. Borscht. Oh, I think I did watch the Lego Batman movie. Yeah, we did. And I do recall thinking it was cute. Mm -hmm. Michelle and Christopher Walken were together in Hairspray. Is Michelle Pfeiffer in Hairspray? The remake. Oh. With Travolta. Oh. I've never seen that version. Is she... Um, who is Michelle Pfeiffer in Hairspray? Is she the mom? Yeah, I don't know. The Shoemaker Batmans are queer high art and a commentary on capitalism and cis-heteropatriarchy. 
I said what I said. I need to re-watch those with that lens. I, I remember the Schumacher did give Batman nipples. I don't know that. I don't. I haven't watched those movies. I would vote for the penguin in the next election. <laughs> I mean, Michael Keaton's, yeah, this part of his face is nice, I guess. But then when he takes the... <laughs> he has nice eyes. <laughs> I think Michael Keaton's like a nice enough looking normal regular man. Yes. I guess in my mind, I've always thought Batman is like Christian Bale, who's more handsome. And I think I picture Christian Bale as being more fit. Well, Christian Bale's Batman voice is... <laughs> but I don't. I haven't watched those movies. I just know uh, that he is that. So that, I think that's my impression. But then, like Ben Affleck, in the one where it's like all, it's not just a, a Batman movie, but there's like Justice all, League. He looked kind of crazy. That suit looks so big on him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. <sighs> The entire time I was like, were these bum citizens seriously going to elect this man? Yes. Apparently. <laughs> my God. That's why Gotham's raggedy. If I were Bruce Wayne, I would just leave. <laughs> I mean, Gotham is... You could go to San Diego. I don't know. Did We ended up in the same parallel universe at a point very recently as Gotham. <laughs> oh, someone said, I met the writer Daniel Waters in a screenwriting class, and I want to say he said Michelle Pfeiffer putting the live bird in her mouth was her idea. Oh. That's pretty... That's bold. Yeah, that is bold. But I'm sure they got her a nice, clean little bird. I do... Uh, oops, I lost Ooh, my this cat. Oh, I'm very far behind. Um, okay, oops. Oh, wow. Uh, I didn't realize there were so many comments. <laughs> Fabulous oh, wow. Baker Boys. Is this really all the way? Wow. Okay. Uh, I mean, Fabulous Baker Boys is also an iconic Michelle Pfeiffer performance. There are way more comments than I thought, so we need to get through these. Um, what do you think about The Dark Knight? Married to the Mob is good, yeah. Have you seen City of Lost Children? Oh, yeah. Jean-Pierre Jeunot and uh, Mark Caro. Because mm -hmm. Jeunot did uh, Alien Resurrection. Oh, Dangerous Liaisons. Yeah, I think that was her first Oscar nod. That's a great film. Age of Innocence, Scorsese's. Yeah, that's a great book, too, Edith Wharton. Uh, and Winona Ryder got an Oscar nod for that. I haven't watched that in years. Could we talk about Succession? You haven't seen it. I haven't. And I've watched like three episodes. I but, have watched the first three episodes of Dead Ringers. Um, I did enjoy it enough. Okay. I'm just trying to... Oh, yeah. Big Fish. Jessica Lang's in that. George Clooney will always be my favorite Batman. He wasn't giving much, but I just love Batman. <laughs> He's giving his that smug little thing he does that people love. Or I like George Clooney like as a personality, but I just can't picture him as Batman. I did really enjoy rewatching Out of Sight recently. You really liked it. A I lot. did. I yeah. thought it was it was good enough. I mm -hmm. guess. Um, Batman and Robin should burn for eternity. <laughs> oh, see now I want to watch that with Chris O'Donnell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Joseph sitting in front of Panera like Gia Gunn. There's room for everybody. Let's just say that. <laughs> I, I'm not shaming, but it's just like people really do. I mean, I've been known to leave the house looking crazy too, but I mean, the face is still there. You know what I mean? Like some. <laughs> If you need a, I don't know. Some people leave the house looking like, and then with their kid, you know, the other thing I always think about is like, like moms who maybe need a little extra help getting ready to be presentable, however they think is best. And then they don't do that. And then they take their kids out. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm very lucky because my mom's beautiful. And when I was a kid, she would all, my mom would not leave the house. I don't think I've ever seen my mom leave the house in sweats or a t-shirt, mm -hmm. like as a kid. And she would always be done up. But I just think like, I don't know, it seems I'd be, I would have been embarrassed if my mom looked like a scarecrow and then dragged me to school or dragged me to the store. And then people see that. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's bad to say. I don't know. 
A wedgie. That was the word. A wedgie. A Mel. What's the difference between a Melvin and a wedgie and a Murphy? Uh, but yeah, wedgie was the word I was trying to think of. Wedgie is what it is. Oh, but then someone's saying it, they also call it a, a Murphy. What's the word? And then what's a Melvin? What's where the kids get their heads stuck in the toilet and flushed? Isn't that something? Oh. That's got a name too. God, there are so. Okay. I'm so. I have not seen Sweeney. No. What's the movie? Did Tim Burton do the movie with Johnny Depp and Christina Ricci? Sleepy Hollow. He did that? Mm -hmm. I haven't seen that. Sleepy and I've rented that movie like four times. Sleepy Hollow is good. Uh, Casper Van Dien has a small role in that. And Sweeney Todd, is, I like as well. Mm -hmm. What's the topic for the podcast tomorrow? We're going to watch a... Um... Well, a legend died this week, so and it's my week to choose, so it'll be in that vein. Belafonte. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it'll be a movie that is related to other reviews we've done. There you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Comfort of Strangers by Schrader. Oh, so good. And the book's good, too. I've I've never seen Grease 2. What's your opinion Pacific on The Dark Knight? Mm, it's fine. Fine. I think The Dark Knight Rises is my preference of the Nolan films, but... Pacific Heights is a lot of fun where he destroys the property owned by, is it Melanie Griffith and Matthew Modine? Part of those, are, is that Schlesinger directed that? He's very much older. I don't know. Thank you, Marga. Thank you, BMCK. We're both 5'11". Mm -hmm. We're the same height. Mickey Rooney. Oh, and, and Breakfast at Tiffany's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's embarrassing. We're the best. Thank you. Um, I need to rewatch Soul Man. You're thinking of Bernie Mac. What's the movie where the white guy paints himself? Oh, that's the one you're thinking of? With C. Yes. C. Thomas Howell? Yes. <laughs> oh, I thought you were thinking of... You don't even, You never give me credit for nothing. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I remember that movie when I was a kid. Yeah, I did too. I Because I used to think C. Thomas Howell was cute because of the outsiders. I'm not saying Sigourney looks like a man. I'm saying that she's so tall that to find a gymnast her height will probably be difficult. So they'd probably have to find like a male gymnast and somehow make that work. You know, fashion has changed since here I'm on. Uh -huh. Jodie Turner-Smith, you know, she still needs to prove to me that she can do something. Because she seems a little dead behind the eyes in a few things I've seen. I mean, I like her in, I like, I really like the movie- Queen uh, and Slim. Queen and Slim, but then we saw her in, a couple a things. A few things, and it was like, oh, wow. Well, I, d I really didn't like After Yang, and I know that's not the popular opinion, but with that spoiler oh, girl. Oh, I did like the movie Cherie. 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 Yeah, it's Stephen Frears. God, that took forever to get made, too, I think. Our cat's name is Aggie. Not named after Spyro Agnew, named after Patricia Agnew, a Janet Jackson film character. Um, do you like Gaspar Noe's films? Yes. Which is your favorite? Uh, climax, but I, I think Irreversible is hard to watch. I just watched the reverse cut of that. Um, oh, no, you know, Climax, but Enter the Void, I think, is a masterpiece too. I don't like love. Yeah. Bale is an awful Batman. Well, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just in my mind. It, the Batman voice is, ugh, it's hard to settle into for me. Ty Sheridan is Batman. Is he in another superhero? He's in, he's, he's in the latest Pattinson Batman film. Oh. Are you excited about Strange Way of Life? Yes, but well, I'm excited to go to Cannes as usual, but uh, El Motivar did a short in English with Ethan Hawke and uh, Pedro Pascal and... God, can you just couldn't you just made a feature? Why does it have to be a short? Just make a feature. What do we think of Scarface? I haven't seen that movie. I have been wanting to, I have been begging people to come over to watch Scarface. Nobody's in the mood because it's so long, I think. But I love De Palma, Pacino, even Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio. Uh yeah. 
it it i'll probably have to make it a secret film for the podcast mm. oh dark shadow you know i think sigourney was rumored to for dark shadows i remember when that was casting oh well okay um i thought we did have dangerous minds we do have dangerous minds as an option don't we i've only seen that once and it's did i make that up no, it got 13% of the votes. Yeah. With George Zunza. Okay. Um, Wait, Miriam Margulies hates uh, Winona for getting that Oscar nod. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I, remember, I, I do like Age of Innocence because Winona has two Oscar nods, it's that and Little Women. And I don't know. I, I remember watching Age of Innocence being like, why her? But the Academy gets kind of weird with... Uh, supporting nominations to be clear i think people should leave the house however they feel comfortable but i think for people who have like a best look or how do i say it yeah like we all have a version of ourselves that we think is like presentable so i'm often surprised that people will leave the house not like that and then also drag other people with them mm -hmm. <laughs> it's embarrassing um Uma Thurman served drag camp and Batman and Robin as Poison Ivy. Isn't Alicia Silverstone in that too? Um, God, what is that movie she did with Ray Fiennes based on the old TV series around the same time? Not the Avengers. Uh, it was a big flop. I'm forgetting the name of it. What is a swirly? Oh, that's the toilet thing. Okay. Oh. I've never seen, I've only ever seen that in films. Looking awful keeps random strangers from asking me for money or talking to me, which is fine. Well, see, the problem in LA is that everybody in LA looks frazzled. And so then, yeah, people aren't deterred if you look. <laughs> so that's not going to work. Someone's like, oh, now we got to wait for them to get to Swirly. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I guess Tim Burton really does like Johnny Depp. Is Tim Burton still alive? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah, he did start. At you know, I think it's when um, he started using CGI heavily, heavily because Alice in Wonderland, I think it was like 2010, it was readily apparent that he was going down a, a dark road and not the preferred road, not the preferred dark road. Billy Zane um, is very handsome. He's in the opening of Poetic Justice, mm -hmm. which I think is such a brilliant opening because him and Lori Petty, I remember being so excited, of course, to see this Janet Jackson movie. And I was 14 and go to the theater. And it's like, what are these white people doing about movies? <laughs> like, it was such a weird. And then we realized it's they're watching something at the drive in. But he's in a movie that we watch where he has hair and they're on a boat, I think. Oh, Dead Calm. Yeah. No, he looked his finest in Sally Potter's Orlando opposite Tilda Swinton. I mean, truly swoon worthy in that movie. I don't. I don't think I've seen that movie. Oh. Um, your thoughts on Casino Royale? Oh, I like Ava Green, and I remember watching it with you, and you're like, "Oh, she's." I see why you like her. She seems crazy. Yeah. Attracted to that, I guess. Oh. Uh... I got lost again. Okay. Uh... Oh, I'm really lost. Okay. Oh, something about foxes. Yeah, that's. A, I think that's Adrian Lyne's debut. We have a poster for the movie Quarrel. Carell. Carell in our bedroom. We do, where there's the tower shaped like a penis. Uh, I haven't seen And the very handsome Brad Davis, who died of AIDS. Um, and Jean Moreau is in that. You know, they just had a screening for it. They did a, a Jean Moreau retrospective at the Los Feliz in LA. And I would have loved, that might have happened this weekend, but um, I'd love to rewatch Carell. I've only seen it once. And I have the book by Jean Genet that I haven't read. I would like to see a film based on the life of Eartha Kitt, but who would play her? Uh, Janet wanted to. I could see Janet playing Eartha at a particular age, mm -hmm. but I could also see like. I could see Tessa Thompson playing her. Well, I think Eartha has had such an interesting life, but like her trend, like when she moved to New York and lived with her aunt and then got started in theater, I think that's a very fascinating story. If they do her story, though, I don't want to see some like 
the whole thing. 40 year span. You know, the the affair with Orson Welles. Something. Pick a moment. Or when she had to yeah. go to Europe or when she came back from Europe and was in black exploitation films. And do we ever review black and white movies? I'm 25 years old and I love them. Um we've I've, done a few. I mean, I uh, yeah. I mean, the last one was probably uh Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Like YouTube reviews? Yeah. yeah. I mean, because on the podcast we've done quite a bit, I think. Well, for YouTube videos, we usually only do current releases, like new releases, or well, I mean, that's it. But then these live videos are old, you know, usually older. Mm -hmm. And then the podcast is like really different choices mm -hmm. all over the place. I like black and white, like film noir. I mean, I like all kinds of movies. Well, maybe, maybe we'll have a, we should do a film noir poll mm -hmm. with all black and white. Well, we still need to do like a Marlena Dietrich. Well, you could even, cause you know, film noir is usually black and white, but there are technicolor, there are color noirs. That would no, but be I'm much saying... more limited, but you could have that, something like um, the Marilyn Monroe film I like so much uh, that I'm, Niagara or slightly scarlet. Like there are that that's a much smaller list, but also someone said they'll come over to watch Scarface and they'll bring snacks. Mm -hmm. Well, I'd have to well, yeah. I'd have to, we we'd have to see what kind of snacks. Oh boy. <laughs> you could come up with a lot of good themed food for that, which is what I like to do for movie nights, but we could have uh, lots of cocaine related foods. How what would that be? Well, something with powdered sugar. Like you could <laughs> use your mind. You, you can't know. just eat all pow powdered donuts. No, you can't, but okay. Oh, the Avenger. That is the Avengers. Yeah. It, and Diana Rigg was in the old series, but I remember that movie being uh, a, a, a big disappointment with Uma and Ray Fiennes. I got lost again. Okay. <laughs> Not hair on a boat, not Titanic. <laughs> well, I give those references because I know he will know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Oh, Alice. Yeah. Mia Wazikowska. Yeah, that was her big her big break. Thankfully, she's gone on to prove that she's quite good. But Billy Zane is in Dead Calm. Oh, yeah. That's the movie I was talking about. No, it's... Only You. What's that? I have not seen Only You from the 90s. There's a, he did a really bad movie with Sharon Stone where he played her brother called Border Run. That is, oh my god! Mm. I was trying to be a fireman in my 30s and I trained like one of these superheroes. I could pick up quarters with my butt cheeks. Not now. It looks like a toothless walrus's back. There. Oh my god! Oh. <laughs> we should review Orlando. Yes, Zane is fine in that mm -hmm. movie. Well, yes, he is. Until I, I mean, that's considered the original transgender text you know there's a documentary that just came that was played in berlin this year that i didn't see but uh very interesting lens to because it's about an aristocrat that a man that suddenly wakes up to be a woman nick likes crazy women i do i mean you have you to can relate to you have, them. yeah you have to admit they're the most interesting humans but have we reviewed american psycho mm. no and i could rewatch that i yeah i could i would rewatch it i i know that i like it Oh, Daniel Craig's going to be in Queer. The Guadagnino is doing the memoir. What do you think about him playing gay roles? Who? Daniel Craig. Fine. I, I mean, again, I don't think somebody has to prove their sexuality to me. I, he's probably done gay things, but he's played gay a couple times. Infamous. Uh, I'm forgetting. Oh, Love is the Devil. There's a couple Apparently, things. Billy Zane was the original Johnny in Dirty Dancing. Oh. That was replaced by Patrick Swayze. Well, Patrick's a very good dancer. What, what happened just... to Michael Pitt? I don't know. He's in a movie in Cannes this year, though. Uh, I was at a Sundance party in 2014 when he was in the movie I Origins that he was at. Mm. Oh, I got lost. Blue Angel. Oh, Dietrich. Double Indemnity. I've made him watch that. And you've seen Body Heat, which you don't remember, but... The Barbara Stanwyck in Double Indemnity is so good. Um, I would do an anime poll, but I wouldn't. I mean, you don't even know enough anime to. I mean, I'd have to Google like. Yeah, I do. No. 
If, when was the last time you don't watch anime? Well, in Berlin, I watch two, but you don't have to be an expert in everything. No, but we have some anime. Okay. Oh yeah, Cuba. There's a restaurant in LA called Versailles. Oh, and La Cienega and Pico. It is one of my favorite. If you look at it, it looks like nothing exceptional inside, but some of the best flavored food I've ever had in my life. They have this dish there, this pulled pork with plantains and rice, black rice, or white rice and black bean. Oh, my God. Oh, you really like that. And raw, like They give you almost like a whole goddamn raw onion with it, and I, oh, my God, I love it. I don't care for I'm it. salivating right now. Um, but, uh, it, they have parking, so mm -hmm. that's a plus. Um, Femme Fatale, Femme Fatale is such trash. I rewatched that over the pandemic with my sister, but it's fun. I like De Palma. Uh, Did you watch Red Dragon? I, we watched it several years ago. I know you just rewatched it on your own. Oh, I watched it? Mm hmm With Ray Fiennes and... Oh, Anthony. Ray Fiennes is very handsome, too. Mm, yeah. Which I think is funny that his character is supposed to be like, like he thinks he's unattractive, mm -hmm. but like you're not at all. <laughs> oh, Night of the Hunters. So Robert Mitchum and Shelley Winters are so goddamn good in Night of the Hunter. When he's withholding sex from her. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. I lost myself again. Um, oh no. You. Oh wait. Oh, Chinatown. Mm-hmm. People must be crazy to say no to watching movies with you. <laughs> they don't usually. Well, no one says no. You just. It's, it's hard getting him to agree to allow people to come over. I don't want to watch a movie with people if I have to review it. Because all everyone does is talk through the movie. And that shit drives me crazy. I can't pay attention when everyone's trying to be a comedian. So. You yeah. just implement a new rule. What? Well, no, that's no fun then if it's like everyone has to shut up while I watch this movie <laughs> because I have to take notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, is there a box in the bathroom? Yeah. Oh. I put it in, in there to keep them away from the cat. Well, she found them. She has found them. Oh, there's oh yeah, only you, Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. Billy. Oh, there's a superhero movie called Phantom with Billy Zane. Right yes, now. and I've never seen that. And I forget the female lead. It's not Penelope Ann Miller, is it? Uh, I've never seen Phantom. I think that was a big flop. Uh, we are such a beautiful couple. Thank you. Sometimes. Do movies make you happy? Um, me, not him. No. <laughs> not me. Um, uh, I don't think, yeah, Night of the Hunter is never going to be the same. Although I was, I was happy with Guillermo del Toro's Nightmare Alley remake, which I wasn't expecting to be. Thoughts on Blood Meridian becoming a film? God, they've been trying to make that. Aren't we so glad that James Franco didn't get the rights to that? Um, it depends on the director. But. Oh, Nick, where can we read your thesis? You should post it. God, I wrote that in 2006. I need to reread that before I post it anywhere. Well, you talk about it so much, you might as well just post it. You know what? Ava DuVernay came over for a movie night back in 2013. Yeah. And because this was before she was really, really popping. And she, it was suddenly last summer was the movie. And I don't know, because of that, I think I had my thesis. I, I read something to the, I forced people to uh, experience some of my thesis and I gave her a copy. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, poor thing. She brought over some little sweet thing and. And then left with a, a, a thesis. Oh, left the, the thesis. cat's gonna knock the computer over. Um, Michael Pitt, I mean, yeah, probably. Daniel Craig goes to gay bars for conversation. <laughs> did, Michael Pitt did this movie with Robinson DeVore, the guy that directed Zoo, that very strange documentary about uh, the zoo files where that guy's bowels were perforated by the horse penis. Uh, and it just never got released. I think it shot almost a decade ago. Um, is that Derek Jarman you just mentioned? Derek Jarman. Jarman. Uh, well, his his set design on The Devils, I love. But favorite film, probably Sebastian. I've never seen, uh, I have the Criterion version of it. I'm forgetting the name of it. Last of England I've seen. Blue is hard to watch, I think, because he was dying. And it's, you know, all these voices of 
the people that were close to him reading and it's just a blue screen? Um, oh, Marga has been to Versailles. Uh, I, the dish you say you're like in love with to me is not my favorite. Um, I don't think it's good. I'm glad you like it. That's good. But um, I like their Cuban sandwich. It's very good. And the prices are very reasonable. Mm -hmm. And again, there's parking. Yes. <laughs> that is very important to me. Thank you, LJ. Sigourney Weaver. Yes, unless Burton wanted ditzy, she oozes intelligence. That's true. You I both, mean, Galaxy Quest. You both joke about your tempers. Watch Beef Netflix. Um, I don't have a temper. Nick does. <laughs> <laughs> and road rage and no patience. <laughs> Am oh, I lying? You don't have a temper. Okay. I have an attitude. Oh. And that doesn't slip over into strange land sometimes. Okay. Strange land? All right. <laughs> where, where, where? What are the home? What's the median home price in strange land? <laughs> I venture off into strange land. <laughs> the name of my soda is Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar. Which tastes to me just like Diet Dr. Pepper. Um, so I'm not quite sure. Just different Kemi's, I guess. Um, we do need to watch beef, though, because I do like Ali Wong. Do we like living in L.A.? No. I mean, it's okay. Um, well, people ask me this all the time. We have a very nice life here, so I can't complain. But it, it also doesn't feel great that, like, other people don't. Mm -hmm. So, like... Yeah, I live in a nice house and drive a nice car and I don't get stuck in traffic and because I don't have to drive to work. But like seeing like so many unhoused people, people struggling to pay these high ass rents, people unable to purchase homes like California has like the lowest percentage of homeowners, um, people commuting so far to make minimum wage. Um, it's not very clean. I just, so that doesn't feel good, but, um, so that's my answer. Like, <laughs> I can't complain, but. There are cities I like more. And there are places I like more. Yeah, Grave with the Fireflies, I've never seen. It's, I know it's depressing, so it's like, oh. I love the English patient. Please review. I've only seen that once. Do you enjoy a Ettore Scola movie called A Special Day? Yes, with Marcello Mastroianni and Sophia Loren. Marcello's gay in that. Um, that is uh, on Criterion. Joseph said, I don't want people in my house like Whoopi. Well, I don't mind people in the house. I just, like, I don't like watching movies with a group of people if I have to, like, pay attention. If it's just for fun, that's different. But if I have to take notes because I have to talk about it, then no. Also, yeah. Awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, Robert um, Downey Jr. remaking Vertigo. Okay. Have you seen uh, Interstellar 5555? No, I've seen Interstellar, but not, not with the numbers after it. Um, I don't have a Weaver tattoo. I haven't because I, I'm so undecided about which, what I want. Like, do it. Like, to me, it feels like I should do something that's not alien related. I don't know. It, I have. Proposed. I kind of like the poster for Death and the Maiden. I might put that on my body somewhere. Uh, okay. Um, someone's art professor couldn't stop talking about the zoo documentary. <laughs> I mean, it's fascinating, but disturbing. We haven't watched Somewhere in Queens. Joseph didn't want to watch it with Ray Romano and Laurie Metcalf. Yeah. I didn't want to prioritize that. All of my comments are AI generated. <laughs> Have you watched Somewhere in Queens? That's what I just said. Oh. Mm -hmm. What's the first movie I saw that I have fond memories of? Probably Beauty and the Beast or Little Mermaid, some Disney thing my parents took me to. Oh, gosh. Maybe like Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Mm. I saw that in the drive-in. Or Wizard of Oz. I remember a birthday party at Pizza Hut where I got that on VHS for the first time and I love or no Pete's Dragon what do you think of the comment Nick seems so calm I think it's true could you look at yourself in a straight face and say that look at him <laughs> <laughs> Nick is not calm at all 
Um, okay. I recommend The Death of Dick Long. That's by one of the Daniels. Uh, oh. I forget, did Shiner, which one directed that? That is basically the story of Zoo about this guy that dead because it, he had sex with the horse. Oh. It's, there, it's dark, but it's also a little funny too. Um, there's actually a movie called Strangeland. Mm-hmm. With uh, Nicole Kidman, which... I didn't get a lot of traction, but I actually quite liked Kim Ferrante directed that in Australian. Oh no, not the temper thing again. Team Nick always. <laughs> oh, so you're also hostile and impatient. Okay. <laughs> hostile. Um, the next catchphrase is strange land. <laughs> <laughs> Would you call me strange? I don't think I'm strange. I said, sometimes you can go, you can be unreasonable in ways that are nonsensical. Sure, but I don't think I'm strange. That's, I didn't, that's, you go off into. A... No, but I think strange land would be like, I don't know that I would frequent strange land. Probably um, not, but sometimes the thought processes that we like, okay, that doesn't go that way. This is not connected in any certain way. This is strange. Are we near Studio City? Yeah. What is that? Like five, four miles, five miles away? Yeah. I, there's not. A I went to Universal Studios on Thursday and that took me 10 minutes. Um, which I have to say, I I don't think Universal Studios is for me. Because I'm not like into The Simpsons or Harry Potter or Super Mario Brothers. Or shitty food or tourism. And that food, like every restaurant's bad. <laughs> Bubba gum. And then someone b- w- bought me butter beer. Oh. That shit was disgusting. Oh, what it's like, it? it's not beer. I thought it was beer. She's like, I got you butter beer. He recently bought some ginger beer, which I kind of like. Well. It's very strong, though. You sip it. I think, I, I enjoyed it as well, but I think it's, well, I don't know that it's, was it, did it have alcohol in it? I don't know. You put vodka in it. It tasted like it was ginger soda. Okay. To me, but like without sugar. So it was very strong with ginger. To me, it seems like it's a mixer, but I did like it. Oh, the magazine dreams. I know I didn't even watch that out of Sundance. I'm sure they will still review it. And by the time that comes out, maybe this will either ramp up more than it has, is the drama with him, or maybe it'll have died away. Have you seen Looking for Mr. Goodbar? Oh, yes. I heard somewhere that Diane Keaton was suppressing the Blu-ray release of that because it's hard to find a copy of now. But I had it on VHS. Apparently Stephen King, with the book Stephen King wrote, Dance Macabre, where apparently that made his wife sick watching that movie. But you've seen it. I had a movie night for it circa 2009, and I made uh, a Mr. Goodbar pie. Uh, Tuesday Well, Diane Keaton, Tom Berenjar. Yeah. Have Love we, it. Have we watched Black Mirror? We watched like two episodes? Of the first season. And I think we never revisited. But I did I did like it and I do like the concept. It's just... I saw a Little Big Man in the theater and I fell in love with Faye Dunaway. Oh, yeah. We did a podcast for that. For Little Big Man? Mm-hmm. With Dustin Hoffman, who's raised by the Native Oh, Americans. the indigenous... Yes. That was... I don't remember what I thought about She's the though. sex star wife. Uh, oh yeah, and then she's like becomes a um, like a the madam of a brothel. And, uh, Arthur Penn, yeah, that's a great film. Yeah, there are moments in Who Framed Roger Rabbit that scared me, and Judge Dredd and um, dipping the cartoons in the thing. The party uh, is that a reference? Is the Peter Sellers? Oh, someone said Nick's faucet earrings are their favorite because depending on where you are, <laughs> you have. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Very Mr. Clean. Y'all know better than to bring up their tempers in every single live. It's 15 minutes going back and forth. Between them. <laughs> I do watch Brazilian movies. I really like a filmmaker named Marco Dutra, uh, which and he co-directed this kind of very bizarre werewolf movie allegory with Ju- Juliana Rojas called Good Manners from 2017. Um, yeah, I watch a lot of Brazilian films, actually. Pixote is the next Pijote. one. Oh, Pixote. Mm. Yes, and I have a copy of that because it's part of the World Cinema Project that Scorsese does, that Criterion puts out. Joseph, you're not a Minions fan? Oh, gosh. And then part of our... I was at Universal for, like, a team-building event. So we had to do, like, a scavenger hunt. And, like, we basically had to go to every ride and, like, answer questions and one of the tasks was, I guess, at the Minions uh, attraction, 
there's like a door and if you ring the doorbell minions talk oh. and then you have to write down as many phrases as you can for like bonus points that is the opposite of the kind of activity i would enjoy <laughs> so <laughs> i did not enjoy that um although we did go for halloween horror nights once mm -hmm. those lines were and that that's a lot of walking a lot of walking for thrills that aren't thrilling i actually preferred the horror the harbor horror nights at the queen mary because mm -hmm. it was in the parking lot in front of the queen mary and so it was very contained you don't have to walk a lot it was very i would say the quality of that was equivalent to universal and it was just a general overall like grungier and sleazier seeming which i'm i like a bigger splash guadagnino yeah I, I i'm not really the greatest fan of the film the original la piscine uh although jane burke and, and romy schneider are so gorgeous but uh tilda swinton is a lot of fun and a bigger splash and i don't know why i think the subject matter of looking for mr good bar is why diane keaton I just I'd heard that from a, another friend that's like insanely uh, enthusiastic about cinema. So I I've never read that in print anywhere, but it is you can't find it. Did we see Kiss of the Spider Woman? I have once years and years ago. Uh, William Hurt won his Oscar. Do your Sonia Braga and Raul Julia. Do your coworkers watch your reviews? Yeah. But people people watch them but don't tell me and then they'll let it slip or they'll um they'll be very like secretive about it like they don't want anyone to know but it's like well it's on the internet like <laughs> it's not a secret but yeah um i did walk by super mario world again i was just not interested it's just so much walking Mm -hmm. Universal Studios is nothing but walking because then, you know, it's like on a mountain kind of. So it's like to get from one to the other. And then they have those escalators, like eight flights of escalators. And of course, no one's trying to walk. There's just a bunch of slothy ass people on their with strollers on the S these <laughs> and signs everywhere saying don't put strollers on the escalator. And that's all you see. Mm -hmm. You big dummies. Dark Harbor. Oh, the, that's what I'm saying. Yes, the party yeah. is a Sally Potter film with uh, Patricia Clarkson and Chris Scott Thomas. Yeah, I saw that in Berlin. I was, I would have bet money that that was going to win something. 2017. Yeah, that's a lot of fun. And Bruno Ganz, who is now dead. Did you see any other plays besides the Seagull Woodstock, New York? No, because I was only there three nights, um, and then one day was stuck doing interviews all day. Yeah, Babenko is great. Uh, City of God is a great film. I wa I think over the pandemic, I watched Ironweed with Nicholson and uh, Meryl Streep, which I, I believe that's Hector Babenko, right? You're asking me like I know. Mm -hmm. Margot was hung over, but now they feel better. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. Manuel de Oliveira's Abraham's Valley. I've never seen that. Um, that actress, of course, is in the new Bad Living, Living Bad films from... Oh God, I'm blinking on his name, but um, there is going to be a special screening at Cannes in the director's fortnight of Abraham's Valley, a restoration. You know what? Someone just wrote, I haven't been to Universal since grad night. And it just, I just hit me that, you know, I always say I haven't been to Disneyland since 1987, but that's not true. I went to Disneyland for grad night. Okay. So I haven't been to Disneyland since 1996. Okay. But I have no desire to go back. Um, what are we having for dinner? Yeah, we need to eat. I I don't know. Hopefully something yummy and delicious, though. Yeah, uh, Joao Canijo, who I've interviewed. But um, yes, uh, and I'm Going Home, I've never seen either uh, by Oliveira. But God, is Charlotte Rampling in that? And I'm a big Charlotte Rampling fan as well. But that is on my list of things. Do we go to live theater in LA? We have. We did. We saw The Mousetrap recently. We, I would like to go more often. And we saw Diane Weist in um, the play by what's his name? That was great. I'm oh, and we saw it. the play Felicia Rashad directed. Beckett. Yes, mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun. In Alabama sky. Uh, blues. Blues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, I recently watched Out of Africa for the first time 
in the past couple of years with my mom and sister on a trip to Minnesota. And I have to say, I thought it was a little dull. Um, I think Disney and Universal, like how do these families afford? I don't know. It just seems like so expensive because a ticket is like well over a hundred dollars parking food. And then you have like four to five people. That's a lot of money. It is. But um, favorite Mexican dish? Oh, I love beans and rice. Um, I love tortas. Um, but oh god. So uh I mean some good enchiladas with beans and rice would be my favorite, I guess. I don't know though, pozole if it's done right. I make a good pozole. Yeah. <laughs> no, you yeah. do. I mean, may, yeah, maybe like some good enchiladas with beans and rice. Yeah, you but can. like homemade refried beans. I really like my mom's cooking. So, oh, I mean, you know, a good flauta goes a long way too. And you know, up until like a year ago, I had never eaten chilaquiles like ever. For some reason, I always thought it was weird. Like, why am I eating these fried tortillas? Like, when I'm already being given tortillas. And then my mom made some. She never made them as when we were kids. And then someone had given her some like fresh tomatillos. So then she's like, oh, I'm going to make chilaquiles. And I'm like, okay. Oh, it was so good. Mm -hmm. So now she's made them for us like many times. Now we've had them a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do like those. I haven't seen Omar. I'll have to look that up. An opera in LA. Um, I don't hate Tom Cruise. I don't find him to be interesting or talented enough to merit the career he's had. And the Scientology shit, like watching, if you rewatch that shit on Oprah about Katie Holmes, it's borderline terrifying, but yeah, blues for an Alabama sky. And I have a collection of Pearl is it Kleeg's plays. Uh, and I read that before we saw it and I thought the play is excellent. Okay. The night Porter is really good that, that icon, that is an iconic image with Charlotte Rampling holding her breasts, wearing the Nazi uniform. Um, Liliana Cavani, that would be a good secret film. We have to end the video because I have to use the bathroom. Um, yes, you're my, you, you're my favorite Mexican dish. Yeah, that's questionable. <laughs> oh boy! Oh, see, here we are going in strange land. I don't know where after 15 years. Okay. Oh wow. Um, uh, uh, see, then I feel like I have to answer these. Uh, what's your favorite classic queens of? What's your favorite? Uh, t-shirt you have with the person on it? Oh, probably Sigourney and Alien 3 because <clears throat> we look as similar as we're ever going to look. And somebody kept asking about, I haven't seen pictures of Emma Stone and Lanthimos's Poor Things. I'll look that up after this ends, but I have the book. I'm assuming that'll be in Venice. So I'm excited for that. Um, all right. Well, uh, oh boy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Ta-ta for now, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye.